We love them, but should we? Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 uncomfortable truths about characters we love. For this list, we're going over some of the true natures of beloved TV characters that can be difficult to admit to or think about. What are you gonna do? Or you can run off to France, or you're gonna close the curtains, change the locks. This is a joke. Come on, Skylar. You wanna take me on? You wanna take away my children? Number 10. Jake Peralta is a bad boyfriend slash friend slash detective. Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Detective Jake Peralta is a fun and funny guy. But as entertaining as his antics are, he's still an immature man-child entrusted with a gun. Doug Judy, the Pontiac Bandit. Hey, babe. Nice legs. Why are you in boxes? So you would know I'm not wearing a wire. Your buddy Scott said I had to. Jake is an incredibly irresponsible police officer and has been repeatedly fooled by the same criminal multiple times, despite knowing he shouldn't trust him. Jake's immaturity also hampers his personal life. He frequently makes decisions that will affect his girlfriend and later wife, Amy Santiago, without consulting her. What the hell are you doing? Why did you just bet our new car? Because it's fun and because it's who I am. I mean, remember all those crazy bets we used to make when you were falling in love with me? I remember the bets we made when I found you obnoxious and difficult to be around. Yes, those bets. Plus, he often takes his best friend Charles Boyle for granted and mistreats or mocks him more than a good friend should. Your coin, please. I hate mine. You hate your coin? Yes, I thought it was chocolate. But you hate chocolate. It has too much taste. Oh, man. Admittedly, Boyle can be a little over-involved in Jake's life, but still, not a good look. Number 9. Michael Bluth is just as messed up as the rest of his family. Arrested Development Although he's frequently seen as the straight man amidst his admittedly bonkers family, Michael Bluth is far from the picture of stability he seems. I just shut down the banana stand for a half an hour. You know, I can keep it open late tonight if you... No, no, hey, come on. Make me sound like a taskmaster. <laughs> While he's a better parent than anyone else in his family, that bar is incredibly low. He's overprotective of his son and doesn't always treat George Michael well or pay attention to his life, like frequently forgetting his girlfriend's name. Michael also isn't above using his family members for his own gain or ignoring their feelings when it's inconvenient for him. So instead, he doubled down on this. It's like we're identical twins. Sure, he's the most normal Bluth, but he is still a Bluth. Number 8. Norm Peterson is probably an alcoholic. Cheers! The bar this show is named for has many regular customers, but easily its most frequent customer is Norm Peterson. Hey, wait a minute! Coach, Sammy! Hey, I don't want to be left alone locked up in this bar all night. <laughs> <laughs> sure, Norm's frequent witticisms are charming, and the fact that everyone knows his name and greets him when he arrives is fun. But our love for the man cannot disguise the fact that Norm is most likely dependent on alcohol. Now there's a uh, black book underneath the cash register that says Norm's tab on it. You mean this one here with all these little marks? Right. Now, Kelly, each one of these little marks represents a beer that I've purchased in advance. <laughs> the guy's bar tab is astronomically large, and his love for beer is a running gag on the show. Though that's more sad than funny, at least out of context. His frequent presence at Cheers can't have helped his oft-struggling marriage either. Hey, what's going on, Army? It's my birthday, Sammy. Give me a beer, stick a candle in it, and I'll blow out my liver. <laughs> We love you, Normie, but everything in moderation, right? Number 7. Ross and Rachel were terrible together and apart. Friends. Yeah, we'll admit it, we rooted for them too. Try the bottom one. Will they or won't they couple suckered us all in while we watched the show because of their initial romance, but as time has gone on, we've become less enamored with Ross Geller and Rachel Green. When they were together, the pair of them were either insufferably smug or sniping at one another. And for the record, it took two people to break up this relationship. Yeah, 
You and that girl from the copy place, which yesterday you took full responsibility for. I didn't know what I was taking responsibility for, okay? I didn't finish the whole letter. While separated, they were far too involved in each other's love lives than is healthy. Although Ross generally comes off worse, they were definitely not on a break. Rachel isn't blameless either, and we can't help but feel like the show would have been better served focusing less on them. Hello. Uh, hello, is Ross there? Uh, no, he's not. Can I take a message? Yes, this is Russell, Ross's divorce lawyer. Just tell him that since I haven't heard from him, I assume he's decided to give the marriage a try. Ross got married again? <gasps> no! <laughs> Number six, Sheldon Cooper. Being different doesn't excuse bad behavior. The Big Bang Theory. Given that he's arguably the most popular character on The Big Bang Theory, you'd think that Dr. Sheldon Cooper would be a bit more likable. He's calling to ask you a favor. You might be confused because he didn't use the words Penny, Sheldon, please, or favor. Okay. <laughs> Enough chit chat. Okay, step one, locate your emergency key to our apartment. Step two, enter our apartment. While it's clear that Sheldon has some difficulty understanding social cues and getting in touch with his emotions, that doesn't excuse the fact that he is incredibly controlling over his friend's behavior, running roughshod over their wants and desires to the point where most people would unfriend him. I, I thought about the things you said to me yesterday and I realized I'm deeply offended. Yeah, now be a dear and get me one of those complaint forms. <laughs> Sheldon's also incredibly inconsiderate to his girlfriend and later wife Amy on a regular basis. We get that Sheldon's not built like most people, but you'd think that a genius would be able to figure out that the common factor in all his negative social interactions is him. And this is Dr. Gunderson from Stockholm. Ah, Sweden, home of my favorite Muppet and uh, second favorite meatball. <laughs> Number five, Don Draper is a terrible person. Mad Men. The poster boy for 60s style and coolness, Don Draper is a fantastic character with many layers. However, a lot of those layers indicate that he's not a great person. Hello? Are you still in bed? Are you on your way? You're going to wait there. And you're not going to know when I'm coming back. Despite not openly harassing women like some of his colleagues, Don still mistreats practically every woman in his life in a myriad of ways, from his infidelity to gaslighting to exploiting Peggy's devotion to him. Peggy, you know what? You wanna go to Paris? Here, go to Paris. Then there's how he largely ignores his family, including his children and his brother. Plus, there's the whole stealing a dead man's identity thing. Lieutenant Draper? Just go. I can't. Don may have style, but his substance is definitely a toxic one. Number four, Barney Stinson is a borderline predator. How I Met Your Mother. Although protagonist and narrator Ted Mosby is a surprisingly scummy womanizer too, Barney is in a league of his own. One of the girls who I lied to, seduced, and abandoned is trying to ruin my life. Shouldn't be too hard to figure out which one it is. While there's no denying that Barney is an entertaining and hilarious character, he's also incredibly creepy in how devoted he is to getting laid. The playbook contains every scam, con, hustle, hoodwink, gambit, flim flam, stratagem, and bamboozle I've ever used or ever hoped to use to pick up chicks and give them the business. The Barnacle has written a literal book on the many outlandish methods he uses to pick up women. And as funny as some of them are, the whole concept is desperate, sad, and gross when you think about it. Also, despite mostly becoming a better person over time, Barney's treatment of the women he hooks up with is pretty abysmal too. Number three, Michael Scott is the world's worst boss, The Office. As tempted as we were to talk about Jim Halpert's bullying, Michael Scott proved too tempting a target. Try my googie googie. Try my googie googie. Try my googie googie. Try my. While he may be the lead character for most of the show, manager Michael Scott is, despite what it says on his mug, not a good boss at all. He inserts himself into his employees' lives far too much, regularly insults or embarrasses them, and has even harassed several to the point where it's unbelievable he wasn't sued or fired. What are you doing? I'm going to embrace Oscar. You might want to watch this, Angela, because you can't catch anything. Here we go. No. We are going to make a statement. You and I are going to make a statement together. Oscar is my friend. I'd rather not. And I just don't care who sees it. 
I doesn't bother me. Really, would, would, I really rather not. Come here, I really friend. Rather not. You're my friend. No, no. He also regularly displays racist and sexist opinions, which must have been a nightmare for HR guy Toby. You know, even more than Michael's hatred for him. And if I had a gun with two bullets and I was in a room with Hitler, Bin Laden, and Toby, I would shoot Toby twice. Although most of Michael's behavior isn't malicious, ignorance that what you're doing is wrong doesn't excuse it. Number two, Daenerys Targaryen is the Mad Queen from early on, Game of Thrones. We are not defending the writing decisions of season eight. Burning King's Landing for no adequately explained reason went too far. But even disregarding that, Daenerys Targaryen is far from the perfect empowering savior everyone wants her to be. She may have been the breaker of chains, but Danny also takes vicious retribution on her enemies throughout the show practicing collective punishment and killing people without trial or even investigation. Sometimes it is better to answer injustice with mercy. Daenerys frequently uses force and the threat of violence to get what she wants, even if she doesn't need to. I prefer your earlier suggestion. Round up the leaders of each of Marine's great families and bring them to me. But I'm the leader of my family. No, you're crazy. I had nothing to do with this. That she's doing so in the name of a good cause is more terrifying than it is comforting. Okay, the entry on this list that I will go to the mat for is how Ross and Rachel were a terrible couple and also not great people in general. Although funny and great characters for television. I will argue this for the rest of time. Anyway, number one is a very different energy from that, so let's look at the honorable or dishonorable mentions, and then we will uncover the most uncomfortable truth about a TV character we love. And you burnt him alive. You turned on the gas and you lit a match. You murdered him in cold blood. I did it for you. Kill this man for me, and I will believe your interest in our organization is genuine. And then I will arrange a meeting with the cop. Why, because of the light you bear? Did you ever consider the possibility that it's a handicap? The one that blinds you to the most obvious of truths, that you are an abomination. Just like the vampire Bible states. This is a message for the coward calling himself the Black Hood. You think you can attack us from the shadows, but Riverdale is a lot stronger than you. And we're not afraid. I've got an idea. Right. So we're just gonna lock them in there? They're definitely gonna burn to death. Okay, guys, nobody's gonna burn, all right? There's a fire escape. We'll call 911. We just need to buy a little time so we can get the hell out of here. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Walter White is a monster, Breaking Bad. As the protagonist of Breaking Bad, chemistry teacher turned meth kingpin Walter White elicits sympathy from the audience. However, just because it's Walt's story does not make him the good guy. Run. The legendary Heisenberg's road to hell is paved with good intentions to provide for his family, but his simmering newfound pride makes him willing to sacrifice nearly anything that stands in his way. Walt is a murderer many times over, even watching his partner's girlfriend die, while also terrorizing the family he set out to protect. I watched Jane die. I was there, and I watched her die. We're not sure whether the fact that so many of us continue to root for Walt up until the show's end is a credit to the writers, or whether it says something about us. I am not in danger, Skyler. I am the danger. A guy opens his door and gets shot, and you think that of me? No, I am the one who knocks. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.